about the statements of our president. Are those incitement, and what can we do about them? Yeah, I, I, again, maybe I would say um, uh, I'd have to think about which statements in particular. I don't, I'm not speaking for the group on this, um, so I don't know if other folks have thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I would say yes would be our short answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> at Color of Change, we have definitely called for um, Trump's personal account to be removed from Twitter. He, look, he has retweeted mm. um, fake statistics from known white supremacists. The intentional spread of violent misinformation that is having direct implications of safety and people on the ground, I think that's classic case of incitement. Like I'm thinking of when Trump retweeted those uh, videos, anti-Muslim videos over the past summer that were put out by a group that eventually was prescribed in Britain actually, disbanded. I, I think I'm with Brandy on this. We don't have a, <laughs> I don't know that, we really didn't spend a lot of time talking about the president, but, but I'm sure we could go case by case as examples. As an Mexican American, I can think of a specific example of group defamation uh, <laughs> that would apply here. Hello there, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. Now that the midterms are over, I think we should be talking about other stuff. And boy, do I have some depressing other stuff to talk about. A lot of you guys are familiar with this running joke called the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, that's, that's about it. That's the joke. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, the Southern Poverty Law Center is a non-profit civil rights or organization, or at least that's what they claim. In practice and reality, they're more of a left-wing activist organization that is hell-bent on censoring anyone and everyone that disagrees with them by any degree. Anywho, the Southern Poverty Law Center has outlined some uh, new steps. They're starting a campaign called Change the Terms. In this campaign, they... Uh, make terms of service agreements that they feel social media companies should adhere to and if for whatever reason a normal person looks at those terms and services and find them to be insane they're gonna bully and shame these companies to do whatever it is that they want them to do and given that social media companies are bending over backwards to show us how woke and progressive they are chances are this is gonna be very problematic now for people unaware about the Southern Poverty Law Center Here's uh, some representation of their views. Thank you. Uh, my name is Claudia, and I am representing the Arab American Institute. Um, I had a question. How do you define hate groups, and kind of what could be some of the negative ramifications of having a legal definition of a hate group? So, so the scope of these policies, act, the, the policies themselves, do not go about defining hate groups. What they define is hateful activities, and I'm happy to read the definition. Again, I read it at the top, but it really is uh, activities that engage or incite, uh, you know, incite violence, intimidation, harassment, or defamation against groups. Inciting harassment or defamation. Understand that the definitions of inciting harassment or defamation, it will be as loosely and selectively applied as you can possibly think. But yeah, that's, that's these people. Anyways, now if you're wondering why we should be worried about this joke of an organization, well, first of all, we should be worried because chances are all of us will be censored in social media. But apart from that, people like you and me may find the Southern Poverty Law Center to be a total and utter joke, but the fact is a lot of people don't. In the background, you guys will see me surfing through the website of the Southern Poverty Law Center. You periodically be seeing some lists. Some of the names in those lists will seem familiar to you. You'd see original hate groups like the KKK, like the Westboro Baptist Church, like the Nation of Islam, and several other identitarian groups. But you'll also see groups like the Proud Boys. Now, does anyone take the Southern Poverty Law Center seriously? Well, thankfully for us, most members of the population, even people on the left, are somewhat aware of the misguided uh, intentions of the Southern Poverty Law Center. But there are people who do take them seriously. A lot of these people you know. A lot of these people you've seen them on YouTube, if not in real life. And that's where things get crazy. We all know Tucker Carlson's house recently got attacked. His wife called 911 and hid in the pantry. Now, I'm not saying the Southern Poverty Law Center is to be blamed for that. I am not a leftist. But the point is, there are people who look at these groups, who look at the Southern Poverty Law Center and other retarded organizations like this, the Anti-Defamation League is another one, 
they look at those lists of people that they identify as hate groups and they may see someone's name beside the KKK and they make the argument or they have the belief that this person that the Southern Poverty Law Center has put there only because of political reason is just as bad as the KKK that's that's the thing I don't know what's gonna happen I really wish more people would pay attention to this especially people in power because uh, I really feel things are about to get worse before it gets any better if it gets any better that is well you guys I'll talk to you soon